Okay guys, today I'm having a look at the Asus Sabertooth P67 with the thermal armor and also without the thermal armor. Now I've, I've previously done a review on this motherboard so I'll put a link up on the screen for that. I've also done a follow-up video with the assist fan, you know, showing the temperature benefits of the assist fan. So I'll put a link to that video on the screen as well. So this is the assist fan here. Asus specifies that it needs to be a 50mm by 10mm fan. I will put the specifications of the fan I'm using up on the screen. It's a deep cool fan. So basically I've already shown the motherboard stock standard. Um, obviously I've done a review on it. Uh, I've showed the benefits of the assist fan and now what I'd like to do is prove whether the thermal armor is actually benefiting the temperatures of the motherboard because what ASUS says about the thermal armor is that it channels the cool air across the components but they do suggest that you either use the optional assist fan or you use a downward blowing CPU cooler now the downward blowing CPU cooler is another test that I will be doing in the future uh, and I'll be having another video on that okay so the specifications of this system Obviously, the Asus Sabertooth P67. It's running a Core i7-2600K at 4.8 GHz. G-Skill Ripjaws X, uh, it's 1600 MHz, 8 GB of it, 78724. I have um, an EK Supreme HF. Um, it's a nickel acetyl cooling the CPU uh, and I'll talk about the water cooling system in a sec an MSI Twin Frozer 2 GTX 560 Ti the test bed is a micro cool Banchetto 101 the hard drives I have a Western Digital Caviar Black SATA 3 and a OCZ Vertex 2 60GB the power supply is an NMAX Revolution 1250 watt okay so this is what's cooling the CPU I'll put a link up on the screen to a detailed video of this water box. So if you want all the specifications of it, make sure you check out that video. Okay, so here's the board with the thermal armor, stock standard. All the hardware stripped out of it, it's all bare. It does have the backplate on it for the EK Supreme HF water block, so that's why those bolts are sticking up there but other than that everything else is stock standard so you can see this is where the assist fan goes so you just remove that um, normally it's just screwed down by four screws remove the screws remove the cover uh, and then you can just put the assist fan straight in there and it's got the three pin connector Okay, so the thermal armor is very easy to remove. It's only eight little screws. It took me about 30 seconds to undo the screws and then the thermal armor just comes straight off. Not a problem at all. I'm looking forward to seeing the difference in temperatures, whether it's an improvement or not. So you can see the motherboard actually looks pretty decent still without it. You know, there's a lot of stuff actually printed on the board. And, you know, obviously it's very much intended to be an optional thing. Otherwise they would have made it a lot more difficult to remove the thermal armor. But that's not the only benefit of the board, that's for sure. Watch my review and you'll find out the other benefits that this board brings so here's the thermal armor I'll just show you the other side of it it's quite well reinforced well built okay so I'll just give you a quick look at the motherboard uh, all built into the test bed without the thermal armor just so that you can see 
what it would look like in a system without thermal armor. Looks pretty decent. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the results. Now, what I've done for each result is 30 minutes of Prime 95, large FFTs. In the screenshot, you'll see Prime 95 running, uh, and you will also see the thermal radar software, which is part of Asus AI Suite 2. The thermal radar software is uh, the, the best way to see the temperatures of this motherboard because it, this motherboard has a lot more temperature sensors than a normal motherboard. Uh, 12 actually. So the thermal radar picks up all 12 of these temperature sensors, tells you exactly what they are, where they are. So you'll be able to see that in the screenshots. Now I'll be including three tests because I've actually decided to redo the tests with the assist fan uh, for this video. So they might be a little bit different from the assist fan video. The reason I'm doing that is so that you compare, can compare all three results next to each other. With the assist fan and the thermal armor, without the assist fan and with the thermal armor, and completely without the thermal armor. So here's the three results for you. Okay, so some pretty interesting results. So, as you could see with the thermal armor and no assist fan, uh, you know, we had the hottest temperatures. The thermal armor with the assist fan was the best temperatures. Uh, and then without the thermal armor was somewhere in between. But quite huge differences uh, with the assist fan and the thermal armor. So, Basically, in conclusion, the best result is with the thermal armor and the assist fan. So, the those little assist fans, it's just a tiny little 50 millimeter by 10 millimeter silent fan, cheapest chips, you know, you can pick them up for under $10. That can bring a huge benefit to your motherboard. Absolutely 100% worth it. If you've got the thermal armor and the assist fan, beautiful results. If you don't want to run that assist fan, then you're better off getting rid of the thermal armor. Keep in mind that a downward blowing CPU cooler will give you similar results to an assist fan, theoretically. I still have to do the downward blowing CPU cooler testing. Uh, I'll have another video on that uh, in the near future. And then we can get our you know, final conclusion. So that sums up this video. I hope I brought you some useful information. Please subscribe and also please favorite the video if you enjoyed it because that really helps me out. Thanks guys.